your snoring. Oh, did I wake you? No. Oh. What time is it? Um, early. Mm, wonderful. <laughs> Not very romantic. Oh. What? Snoring. Oh, who says who? Is anybody who sleeps with somebody who snores. <laughs> Wrong. I used to think I'd have to get a chin strap or tie a scarf around my head or set the alarm early so I'd wake up before my husband so that he wouldn't be totally disillusioned with me. Hmm. Your husband? Yes. But no alternative situation occurred to you. Well, certainly not at 14. That was the year that I was worried most about my snoring, and my potential husband, for that matter. Hey, why are we talking about husbands? Because no matter what you say, promise, plan, it is getting more difficult to accept the idea that I'd wake up someday without you beside me. Pat, please don't. Good morning. Come on in. I'm ready, uh, but I'm not. But you know. Nervous? Oh, no. Uh, perfectly calm. Good morning, Senator Putnam. I hear you're mean to people. You'll be more afraid of you than you are of him. You want to bet? They haven't had breakfast yet, I suppose. No, I'm not very hungry. That's all the peanuts you had last night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, but if you want to eat, we can stop somewhere. Hmm. How's your stomach this morning? No, I've recovered from our flight, but I rarely eat in the mornings. So I'll grab myself a cup of tea while the crew's setting up. Right. Well, here we go. Into the breach. How do I look, really? Exactly right. <sighs> Good, thank you. And the outline for my interview is all right as it stands. There is time to go over the questions again. No, we went over the questions last night. Yeah. Why are you so calm? I mean, how do you get that way? Well, I'm confident because I know my people. Paul's an outstanding cameraman. Sam's of the same caliber on audio. And you, Mrs. Finelli, have outstanding ability as a news person. Yeah. So, why should I be worried? Why should you? I shouldn't. I know I can talk to Senator Putnam. And uh, the truth is, I feel good about it. Well, you just hold on to that feeling. OK. Uh, oh, thank you. Have you called for the car? Oh, yeah, one should call before. Um, oh, I think you put the ticket in with your notes, inside pocket. Uh, oh. My notes are with the ticket on top of the dresser in my room. No, in the top drawer. Oh, uh, no, check. You call the garage, and I'll go get the notes. All right. Okay. Thanks so much. Mm -hmm. Can't imagine how I did that. <laughs> Uh, hello, it's Mr. Ross. I would like my car in a few minutes. Room 810, Ross. 
What make is it? It's um, it's a sedan. It's a, it, 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 it's blue. I think it's a rented car. I've only driven it in from the airport. I, I really don't know what make what make it is. I don't hold. Morning. That uh, isn't going to work. Morning. Want a bet? Applesauce. All over your homework. Many people carry their lunch in little brown bags. I hate little brown bags. Mm. What are you doing up anyway? You didn't get much sleep. Oh, I slept. I slept. Yeah, what time did you finally go to bed? And how many times were you up with Ryan? Oh, I'm sorry she woke you. She's a poor kid, really miserable with a couple of teeth. Yeah, she didn't really wake me up, except for a dim memory of a call for Daddy in the night. She's really crazy about you. Yeah, well, I'm a little bit stupid about her, too. <laughs> I'm a little bit <laughs> stupid about a lot of things. I was about to call Mary to apologize for last night. Oh. It's ridiculous, you know. I, uh, I called her because I was worried, and then I get mad when I find out she's OK. Yeah, well, she was flying in bad weather, and she did promise to call you as soon as they'd landed. But it's nice that you're taking the first step. Do you want me to get out of here? No, 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 it won't take long. Just a uh, couple of lovey-dovey minutes. I'm sure you can stand there. I'm uh, calling uh, Mrs. Mary Finelli, room 805. Thank you. All right. Busy. Maybe she's talking to Frank. <clears throat> Not likely. Uh, he spent the night here. I noticed him on one of my trips into Ryan. Yeah, well, he was up the crack of dawn. I was up finishing my work. You uh, claim that I didn't sleep. Well, maybe none of us slept. Frank was feeling miserable. I tried to talk to him, but he wouldn't talk. Well, your mother will know about it. Yeah, well, maybe I'll go sound her out on that. Room uh, 805, please. Mrs. Finnell. Mrs. Finelli's room? Yeah. May I ask who this is? I know she was. Uh, look, did you get any sleep yourself? Yeah, I agree, absolutely. Right. Look, um, give her my love, and if there's anything I can do, just let me know. Sure. Look, I'll, I'll call you from the hospital later. Goodbye. Who is that, Seneca? Yeah, Jill had a rotten night. Well, I don't blame her. She was a mess when she came into Ryan's last night. I felt so sorry for her, I really did. Mm-hmm. Is Seneca gonna put her back in the hospital? Nope. Immediate withdrawal uh, at home. Jill wants it that way, and Seneca thinks it's advisable from a medical point of view. Now, he'll be there with her. You mean cold turkey? Yes, Dee. I'm sorry, that doesn't sound good when you're talking about your sister, does it? But won't that be hard on her back and everything? Well, the muscle spasms and her emotional state aren't as much of a potential problem as possible liver damage from the narcotics. Now, the only way to handle that is to get her off of any kind of medication immediately. I mean, she'll be going through a couple of rough days. Is she going to be all right? I certainly hope so. <laughs> Is she going to be an incurable addict or anything? Well, Brush, I'm only asking. Show my concern. She is my sister-in-law. Hey, I'm letting bygones be bygones. Oh, you're to be uh, commended for your generous attitude. 
Well, you know who else I felt sorry for last night is Frank. You know why? Because he's still hung up on Jill, which just amazes me. And like I said to him, he's got Ray, who loves him and buys the world for him. And then there's Seneca, who worships Jill. And obviously, she's made up her mind to love him back, since they're already planning to have another baby and everything. And I really think... Wait, wait, did you, did you say all this to Frank? Yeah. Why? He knew about the baby. He acted like it. Everybody knows about it. It's no secret, Roger. Honey, it's not always necessary to discuss everything that everybody knows. Well, I don't understand the rules you live by. Sometimes I think you make them up as you go along. What am I going to wear today? For what? For the day. I miss my Fitch. It solved all my problems because it covered them up. Well, where is your Fitch? It's in storage. Do you think it misses me, too? Mm, undoubtedly. Is there such thing as a summer fur? <laughs> well, if there is, I'm sure you'll find it. Now, what is on your agenda for today, my dear? Just my commodities. Oh, what time is it? Good, I can call him. Honey, it's not even seven. Oh, that's all right. Any time after seven is fair game. Besides, Mr. Grimley makes hundreds of dollars in commissions off my account. Good morning, Mr. Grimley. How you doing? Yeah, I, I know. I'll just say this one thing, then. I want to sell my cocoa contracts and buy back into tea. OK, I want to shoot the works. Don't hold anything back. Just put the entire account into tea. Yeah, I'm certain. No, I don't want to think about it anymore. Sure. I'll call you back later when you're in the office. All right. Goodbye, Mr. Grimley. How do you like that? I'm about to give him a commission that'll put his wife in caviar for a month, and all he can do is tell me what time it is. Honey, are you sure about the tea? Sure, I'm sure. I had the most positive feeling with Maeve last night. I don't care what Mr. Grimley says. I know I'm going to make a second killing in tea. What are you smiling at? Oh. I see it beginning here and here. It isn't really funny. Tell me. No. Why? Because it isn't funny. Pat, that's maddening. I'm sorry, it's convoluted. So tell me anyway. We're in love. Mm. So far, so good. Mm. We belong together. Better and better. We can't consider marriage because of deeply held religious convictions on both sides. Yes. So here we are in bed together, unmarried, a violation of both our religious convictions and practicing birth control, which is a violation of my religious conviction several times over. Yes. Well, so tell me again why we can't consider marriage? Because of the children. If we keep practicing birth control, there aren't going to be any children. Pat, don't. Uh, you're playing with it now. <laughs> well, that might be, but this suspension of logic is a little fascinating. It's not like either one of us. Pat, if we'd been being logical and going by the rules, then you'd be in New York right now, and I'd be getting up to get dressed to go to work, trying to put you out of my mind and life. <sighs> That's not what we agreed to do. Uh, no. Just us. Together. Now. Please, Pat. All right. It's all right. Uh, no, no, it isn't. Not, not, it, not if you give up now 
and start talking about marriage and children. Because we can't do that. I know. No matter how much we might want to. And I do. Oh, Patrick, I do. I'd, I'd give the world if it could work. But it can't. And we know that. And we agreed to that. We did. And this conversation is much too painful to have over and over again. Nan, look at me. I love you. I don't want to hurt you. I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, please. I just... Just for a little while. I need to think that we could be lovers forever. Oh, we can. We will. <sighs> I'm jealous. Of who? <laughs> of all the people. Safe and secure. In their promises and their marriages. Well, maybe we have something that they don't have. We're never going to take this for granted, never take each other for granted, or waste the time that we have together on anything but knowing one another and loving. Do you think we can manage that? I hope so. I do, too. Thatcher Ross, and I'm speaking to Jack Finelli. Oh, I thought the voice was familiar. Good morning, Mr. Finelli. Where is my wife? Well, she's in my room, actually. She's picking up an item I forgot. An item? Is there any point in my asking for a fuller explanation? Oh, I, I don't think so. It's just a slight mix up. So you've called to wish Mary good luck, huh? Yeah, I wanted to tell her to break a leg. Maybe I should call her in your room. Oh, I don't think there's any point. She'd just hurry down the hall. She'll be hurrying right back. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, once she hurries in, you can give her a message for me. Um, oh. You can tell her. No, you can you can give it to her in person, Mr. Finelli. Here she is. <laughs> you left your key, too. Oh, yeah. Is that Jack? It is. It's your... And he's a bit exercised, me answering your phone, et cetera. Oh. Honey, good morning. What the hell is going on? Nothing. How are you? Did you have a good night? Terrific. How about you? Huh? Thatcher and I were just leaving, but he, he left some of his notes in the room, so uh, I... Yeah, he told me about the notes and a little mix-up and hurrying down the hall. Mary? I certainly hope my interview goes well. Right, right. This is, this is no time for a battle, and, and I certainly am not looking for one. In fact, I, I called because I want to apologize for being a pain last night. You can add this morning to that. Thanks. That's very nice. I'm sorry. Look, there are a lot of things going on here, Jack. Yeah, I got that when Thatcher answered your phone. What does that mean? Mm -hmm. When you came on, too. Hmm? Yeah. Where exactly is his watch, Mary? Now, forget it. I just, uh... Ticks me off, that's all. He, he treats you like some kind of lower secretary sends on errands. Jack, that isn't so. Exactly the opposite happens to be the case. Excuse me. He treats you absolutely like an equal. Right. And now you mention it, you might have some thought to that, too. Equality? You gotta be kidding. You wanna tell me how I keep you tied to the kitchen and your life filled with babies and pasta? No. I just wanna get off the phone. Right. See you tomorrow. Fine. Good luck with the senator. Thanks. Well, we better get going. It'll cooled off by tonight. Don't let it spoil your day. 
No. I'm going to have a wonderful day. Let's go. Did that go as bad as I think it did? What'd your mother say about Frank? She's not back from Mass. Have a good day. Yeah, you too, if that's possible. It is. Everybody stays out of my way. Parties, boys, and drama, oh my. Catch up with the five sexy singles who are putting a new spin on Southern charm. Don't miss an all-new Southern Bells Louisville, Thursday at 10 on SoapNet.